Today we are going to be taking a look at the American Revolution Liberty or Death box set from Warlord Games. Built by them as a box set of wooden and resin buildings and scenery and finely sculpted plastic miniatures. So what do you get for your 175 quid or $280? Well, a massive box set to start with. Even before assembly you're going to have to think about where you're going to store this beast. Whilst I unpack the whole thing, let's take a detailed look at some of the sprues. I've counted 31 sprues in all, with 11 different variations. You could make 120 American Colonial Army soldiers in total, and there are 8 duplicate sprues given over to this purpose, plus 4 more for the command. For each of the 12 bodies on the infantry sprues, there are a choice of 29 different heads, covering the full range of Continental Army headgear. You are also generously supplied with different arms, with and without muskets. The command sprue has the standard general, standard bearer and musician configuration. Speaking of generals, as well as those on the command sprue, the artillery sprue contains six more in total, although having said that, these are mounted army generals, and although you have six bodies, you only have three horses so I guess it's options over numbers here. These mounted generals are designed for use with either side, and the same can be said for the artillery, with 12, 6 and 9 pound guns being usable on either side, and enough spare parts being provided for the gun crews to be dressed up as either Americans or British. The eclectic artillery sprue also contains a casualty figure, and a figure for the legendary AWI heroine Molly Pitcher. Seeing as you get three of these, you can form your own Molly Pitcher singing trio, or just use a couple of spare civvies. Of course, the Continental Army wasn't actually formed until over a year into the war. Prior to that, and beyond, it was the militia that faced the British, and they feature in the box by way of three sprues containing 12 hunting shirt wearers and 18 militia in frock coats. It's good to see a kneeling figure amongst these 30. Before we move on to the British, let's have a quick look at their allies, the Hessians. We have 30 of the Germans in total, including a command sprue. Headwear is supplied for making either or both standard infantry and Jaegers. It's interesting to note that these figures, including several others in the set, were originally from the Warlord Factory Stable, the US company that was bought out by Warlord Games in 2015. Wargames factory figures have a quite distinctive slender style, which I must say I like, but it does mean that they can look rather conspicuous when ranked up with other manufacturers' AWI miniatures. There are 90 British infantry troops in the set in total. Slightly more versatile than the colonial army figures, the British in this form saw action throughout the war. There are 26 head options available for the 12 bodies on each sprue, plus different arm options are plenty. The last figure sprue in the box is that of the Woodland Indians. Each one of these eight models is dynamically posed, making for a great looking, if small, native warband. Moving away from the figures now, this box set seeks to provide more than just miniatures and the inclusion of MDF fencing and an iconic AWI blockhouse, along with three resin gun gabions, certainly gives you a good starter towards your complete revolutionary tabletop. So that's it. The box is empty and the goods are on the table. It's a major heap of AWI goodness, working out at around 61 pence or $1 per figure, with, using these calculations, the scenery bits being thrown in for free. What isn't to be underestimated is that to go from this to this will take a lot of work. I reckon on average you can get a figure put together and painted in what, two hours? So 285 figures is 570 hours, or 57 weeks if you have 10 hours of painting time a week. What would seem to make a lot of sense is to split the cost and workload of the set amongst the members of your local Wargames club or group. In the February issue of Wargames Illustrator magazine, we take a closer look at this set, focusing on where do I go from here, with some thoughts on how you can expand out of the box and into cavalry, the French and beyond. 